I invite you to hear the word of God as we read it together from James 1 and Jeremiah 32. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But everyone... ...is freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they heard, but doing it. They will be blessed in what they do. The people of Israel and Judah have provoked me by all the evil they have done. They, their kings and officials, their priests and prophets, the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, they turned their backs to me and not their faces, though I taught them again and again. They would not listen or respond to discipline. They set up their vile images in the house that bears my name and defiled it. They built high places for Baal in the valley of ben Hinnom to sacrifice their sons and daughters to Moloch. Oh, I never commanded, nor did it enter my mind, that they should do such a detestable thing and so make Judas sin. You are saying about this city, by the sword, famine, and plague, it will be given into the hands of the king of Babylon. But this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I will surely gather them from all the lands where I banish them in my furious anger and great wrath. I will bring them back to this place and will let them live in safety. They will be my people and I will be their God. I will give them singleness of heart and action so that they will always fear me and that all will then go well for them and for their children after them. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good to them, and I will inspire them to fear me so that they will never turn away from me. I will rejoice in doing them good and will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and soul. This is what the Lord says, As I have brought all this great calamity on this people, so I will give them all prosperity I have promised them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. There is a difference between listening and faithful listening. The father says to the son, didn't you hear what I said? The son says, yes. Then why didn't you do something about it, the father says. Later, the son would say to the dad, you never understand me. You never listen to me. You never pay attention to me. All you do is give me stuff. You never give me your time, your attention. The truth is, We all need to listen to each other more. We need to listen to those that we love and focus on them. And not just listen with our ears, but respond with our actions. That's what this passage is about. Don't be just hearers, but be doers. And specifically, it's talking about listening to God and then responding to Him. And that's what we'll be responding to and thinking about today. One of the saddest stories, and I'm thinking about the Super Bowl today. Sorry, if you're not a football fan, please be patient with me. Um, One of the saddest stories that's gone on this past week is what has happened to one of the greatest talents in football. Johnny Manziel won the Heisman Award at Texas A&M. He was drafted in the first round of the NFL. He was given several opportunities to start for the Cleveland Browns NFL football team. But he had a problem with alcohol abuse and drug abuse. He went to rehab last summer, 
apologized for his actions, but this past week he's gone back to his old ways. And everybody is trying to tell him you need to focus on what's really important and get yourself well and stop abusing alcohol and stop abusing drugs and stop abusing your girlfriend. He is under uh, suspicion for abusing his girlfriend in Dallas. His parents tried to get him in rehab twice this week. He wouldn't listen to them. His own agent tried to get him to, to go into rehab. He wouldn't listen to him, so his agent quit. Cleveland Browns tried to, to, listen, to talk to him about his problem. He wouldn't listen to them. He wouldn't listen to anybody. Isn't it sad? Isn't it sad when somebody very publicly will not listen to anyone? And isn't it sad when the people you know, or even yourself, when we shut our ears and we won't listen to what we know is right and good for us? In our passage, it talks about listening and being doers. There really are three kinds of listeners to the Word of God. There are people who really refuse to listen. There are people who listen, but then they don't respond, and there are people who listen and respond. So that's, let's think about that for just a little bit. Um, it's very similar to the idea that Jesus had about the good soil and the bad soil and that kind of thing, that parable that he told. Uh, there are those who, who hear, but they really refuse to listen. They plug their ears. They Stop listening on purpose. They don't want to hear. That's, I think this is where Johnny Manziel is. And there are even those who get mad when you're trying to talk to them and they don't want to listen. This is the way the Pharisees responded to Jesus. I don't want to hear that you're the Messiah. And so Jesus said to them, they have ears to hear, but they do not hear. The gospel call to everybody is to shed the skin of our pride in thinking that we know better for ourselves and to listen and respond just like a snake sheds its skin to be made new. A second kind of hearer are those who hear but just don't act on what they know and understand. They listen positively, but they listen for information. And there are a lot of people in the church today, and and I've been this way too, who just listen for information and they think it's about somebody else, but it's not about me. It's about learning things, but it's not about changing my life. The gospel is not, not here for us to be entertained or for us to merely be informed. It is for us to learn and to be changed. And sometimes we can have low expectations that God will do anything with our lives and we have low expectations that we will ever change. Sometimes life hardens us and we suffer and we refuse to listen to what God is saying. But I invite you to open your ears. Spurgeon said, these are the kind of folks who hear the call to repent, but they do not repent. They hear the call to believe, but they do not believe. They remain staunch in their skepticism or in their indifference. A lot of the problem in the church today is we just are indifferent. We're apathetic. It doesn't really matter about God. It's secondary to us instead of primary Spurgeon says, hearing of a feast will not fill you. Listening to a brook will not quench your thirst. Having the right information does not change who you are. Knowing where the storm shelter is will not keep you from getting wet. Knowing what kind of medicine will cure you is not the same as taking that medicine. Someone called people who who are hearers but not responders to God as practical atheists, practical atheists. You can't really tell the difference between an atheist who doesn't believe and this Christian who doesn't act on what they know. Don't be a practical atheist, but let God change your life. Listen to him. 
and let the Holy Spirit help you to respond to him. James describes such a person as one who looks in a mirror and then walks away without changing. It's, you know, when you look at the Bible and you look at Scripture and you really look at Jesus, it shows you something about who you are. And it shows you something about what you should be and who you can become if you will look and, and hear. It's like looking in a mirror and seeing who you really are. But do you just walk away and forget about it? You know, I have a terrible habit, and I maybe inherited it from my grandmother. I remember my grandmother was a very elegant lady, but when she got older, like in her mid-80s, she would look in the mirror, but she wouldn't see so well, and she would do her lipstick, and it would be all over the place. And, uh, and, and I have a really bad habit. I'll look in a mirror, but then I'll just walk away and, and not really change the way I look. So, you know, sometimes my hair will be sticking straight up, and Kay has to tell me, wait, put your hair down, you know. Or sometimes I'll have lint, a big piece of lint on my coat and I just I see it but it doesn't really phase me and just walk away. Don't see what's wrong and then do nothing about it. Don't just be a hearer of the word. Be a doer. Be someone who responds by the power of the Holy Spirit to the word of God. And the third kind of people are those who hear and respond. And he gives us some, some uh, specific things about how they do that. These are the folks who listen positively and bear fruit for Jesus Christ in their lives. And they're making a difference for Christ in their lives. The three things that he says about these folks is they look intently into the Word of God. They continue in the Word of God and they do what the Word of God asks them to do. They look intently into it. They examine it. They peer down into it. A few years ago, my wife uh, had her diamond ring that I gave her many, many, many years ago needed to be polished. And so I took it to the jewelry store, and the jeweler didn't just polish it. He took it and he examined it. He got his little special glass out, the special scope out, and he looked at the diamond and he turned it, and he made it shine in special ways that I'd never seen before. And I think that's how we should look at Scripture. Not just, oh yeah, there's Scripture. But turn it and look at the different facets of it. And, you know, every time I read the Bible, I get something new out of it. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He, He takes the Word and applies it to our lives. The Scripture is meant to be applied to us. And then, uh, there, there are some folks that, that take notes on, on Scripture and, and the Scripture that we have on Sunday or in Sunday school and or look at the sermon on YouTube or Facebook and play it back while they're, listen, while they're driving in their car or, or if they miss a Sunday because they want to go back through it and, and digest it. People who hear the Word and act on it digest it. They don't just pass over it. It's not like a piece of trash on the ground that you just pass over. You take it And you digest it and take it into your life. And then the second thing it says about these folks is they continue in it. They don't forget it, but they continue in it. The word for continue in the NIV that we read is the Greek parameno. And it's made of two words, para, from which we get our word parallel. It means beside. And meno, which means to abide. So we are to abide beside the word. Really Abide in the Word. Really stay in the Word. Really remain in the Word. Let the Word be a part of your life. Don't let it be a dusty book on the coffee table or the bookshelf or an app that's on your phone that you never use. Abide in it. Continue in it. And if you've read the Word and it doesn't seem to mean much to you, then read it again. Abide in it. And the third thing these listeners who respond to is is they actually respond to it. A reaction occurs, like um, like when you're trying to light your grill and you you you, you have the gas on and you, you you turn the little lighter on and poof, it gets going. Let that be the reaction in your heart to the Word of God. Let it get going in your life. Respond to it. Let it ignite in your heart. 
be a doer and not just a hearer only. Another football story. Uh, this happened when I was a kid, but um, Jim Marshall was a great player for the Minnesota Vikings, and he really should be in the Hall of Fame. But in this particular game against San Francisco 49ers, he had picked up a fumble, ran it in for a touchdown, and then another time came, he picked up the fumble, and he ran it into the end zone. The only problem was he ran it into the wrong end zone. He ran it 66 yards the wrong way. Everybody on national TV saw it. And, and all his players tried to catch him and tackle His own players were trying to tackle him. And the people on the sidelines were, were running down the sidelines saying, turn around, turn around. And he, and he thought, you know what he thought? They're cheering me. This is great. I'm going to run in for another touchdown. They're so excited for him. People in the stands were yelling at him. He thought they were cheering for him. He heard something, but he wasn't really paying attention to what they were saying. And he was not responding to what they were saying. There are people in your life who are saying, turn around. They're the word of God is saying, turn around, go, go the right way, go God's way. Are you listening? Or do you just continue to plow down the way you thought is right? Listen. It, the word of God is not for the person next to you or the person over there or the person down the street. The word of God is for each of us. Listen to the word of God and ask, Lord, what do you want me to do? How can I respond to you? And then don't just listen, but respond to it. Amen.